this thing is steering so aggressive. We'll see if you can see or not. everyone it's a beautiful spring day I love this time of year I love when the Sun comes out and starts getting warm uh, winter's finally going away makes me happy anyway I am headed to Minnesota actually I'm in Minnesota I'm headed to Mankato I'm headed up to A&E construction uh, they're a wolf plow dealer we got a couple machines, a couple of our customers have new machines up there. I have to, um, the one, we're having problems with the uh, valves, so I got to try and work on that. Um, redo some wiring, wire it up a little bit different. And the other one, I think I just got to calibrate, uh, swap antennas out on it, and uh, get that one done. That's uh, for my buddy Cody, so his new machine. So. We'll uh, try and do some filming while we're there, show some of the machines, and um, yeah, you'll get to see a little bit of what I do on a daily basis. 620 with Mitch. Mitch, what are you... So, I'm watching Welker Farms here. They're down in Arizona at the Case IH testing ground, and I look in the background and I see a Johnson plow. So. I know Jim Johnson sent a couple of his plows down to Arizona for Case IH so that they could uh, test out their new CVX transmission. And uh, so it's kind of cool to see one down there. And kind of a funny story, uh, an engineer called Jimmy and said, oh, I think we've got all the bugs worked out of this transmission. It's bulletproof. We're, we're going to break your plow. And if anybody knows Jim Johnson, <laughs> He's, he's quite a character. He goes, you won't break that plow. I give you permission. Sink it as deep as you want. You won't break my plow. And the engineer goes, okay. The next day, the engineer called back and said, we found a weak point in the transmission. Well, when, those, when that one plow came back from Arizona, there was dirt over top of the pin. The pin is six foot high, so they had it pretty deep. So today I'm working on this tile plow on the steering. We're having some problems with the steering. It wasn't wanting to react very well. So I got sent up here to work on this. Um, to complicate things, we're in a parking lot. We don't have a lot of room in maneuver. The truck driver is sitting here waiting to load this machine up and take it to its new owner. And um, we think we have a bad globe, which turned out to be a bad cable, so it, things just were not going my way on this one. But um, what I'm doing here is going through and changing settings. This is not like a track tractor or a uh, sorry a wheel tractor where you have steering gain and um, um, steer angle dead bands and things like that to play with there's a lot less things you can change on a track machine uh, basically I can play with the pump knees or the pump dead bands the command angle uh, scaling and um, uh, there's a couple other settings so that's what I'm trying to do here but everything I change doesn't seem to make a difference this machine is just steering so violently um, every time it makes a correction, it just completely stops one track, and it just shakes back and forth. So that's what I'm trying to do here, trying to calm this machine down and make it somewhat usable. All right, we finally got it working. Um, it, this, it wouldn't steer, and it uh, seemed like no matter what I did, it just did not want to... Um, 
make a change. Every change I made just seemed to be the same. Uh, we finally figured out there was some settings in the plus one system, which is the computer that controls the machine that were wrong. So we got those, we got those figured out and uh, got this clean, got all calibrated, running good. Um, now I have a bad cable running to the globe there for the grade control into there. So we got to fix that. Um, the trucker is here. He's ready to go with me. box um, we're gonna wire in those relays two those are for our grade control one pair is for grade and the other pair is for the attitude control so we're gonna wire those in run the wires all the way out and into the cab to our grade control through an auto-tune calibration right now it basically uses its GPS elevation to run the cylinders up and down and uh, measure the responsiveness and so it tries to move the cylinder as fast as it possibly can without overshooting too much so that you get good reactive grade control. It takes about 10 minutes to run through this. Then we'll have to do it again on the uh, pitch or the attitude. This is what we call a square hood 540. This is, um, Wolf's went from uh, about a 250, 320, um, 400, 450 and then the 540s and then the 600s um, those numbers pertain to the horsepower so these are a square hood because they have a square hood to them square smaller older cab uh, these are great machines they just are older smaller cab and the uh, the red one back there that's the one I'm currently working on. That's the newer, the new style 540. Um, it's currently running through a calibration. And those ones are, uh, uh, use a CAT C15, and then the 600s use a CAT C18. Otherwise, pretty much the rest of the machine's the same. It's just the engine that is different on those, the horsepower grading. Um, you can get lots of different options short tracks long tracks uh, these are a parallel link plow You've got the two arms that are parallel to each other all the time um, they make a double link and a cantilever so you can choose which style of plow you want on it the majority of these all all the wolves run a parallel well there was a little glimpse into my day and uh yeah, I wanted to say, since I really only talked about wolf plows today, um, that's because I was at the wolf plow dealership. So they had mostly wolf plows, a couple wolf band trenchers, a coring trencher. Um, I don't know if they had any used. They had some used bronze there a while back. 
I didn't notice, uh, I wasn't paying much attention if they had any there today, but, um, so yeah, I pretty much only, I work on every, every make model of tile plow trencher out there, and some few dozers, scrapers, that kind of stuff, but, uh, that is pretty much gonna do it for the video today, so if you give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, I might do some more videos of uh, tiling equipment. I really like it, uh, working with this stuff. It's pretty interesting. It's kind of a small market. So, anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Holy cow, look how cheap this gas is getting. This is E88, which is E15. I don't know why they call it E88. That's so confusing. Unleaded 88. Whatever. E15. Support America's corn farmers. But man, that's cheap.